It was a fire season like no other. A state of fire emergency has been declared for the first time in Queensland's history. The sirens started up and at that point I was praying. 33 lives lost, 3,000 homes destroyed, 1 billion animals killed and an estimated 30 million hectares burned. Uh, there are no records uh, in the history of fire danger ratings where we've ever seen fire danger ratings this high at this time of the year. The only way out of Cabago is on fire, guys, look. Every single state and territory affected. Holy f That behind me is f Malacuda. In a prolonged, uncontrollable environment. We have literally a circle of flames around all the houses in Kapara. I'm about to go down and have a look at what's left in my house. ABC News was there. The strong winds are now fanning this blaze through the National Park. To the south there were bushfires, to the west there were bushfires, to the north there were bushfires. Mogo has been gutted. A lifeline to thousands in harm's way. ABC Radio Victoria, your emergency broadcaster, bushfire information. We have issued an emergency warning to leave immediately. And the voice of hope as Australia emerged from the darkness. Here are some of the stories of Australia's black summer bushfires. An inferno bearing down on the town of Stanthorpe. Hills ablaze, embers and smoke thick in the air. Up close, firefighters faced the storm head on, holding it back from destroying the town. Evacuate! Evacuate! This is the police! You need to evacuate! Police patrol cars also going from house to house. 903, I've got uh, two houses on fire in Jabiru Street. Jakarna, oh, Jakarna, Jakarna Street. Another Jakarna. resident in danger. Mate, you need to get out, don't go back in. The suburb exploding around them with fireballs and storms of smoke and embers. We've got houses on fire everywhere. Yeah, I know, All the while, urgent calls for help coming in. Water Street, you've got 93 old fellows that need to get evacuated, need some assistance. Oh, shit. The man seeming unaware of the imminent danger. It's the house is burning behind you. in the street yeah. behind you, mate. Behind you on fire. We've got to go. Senior we're Constable we're Diesel Campbell helps him to safety. When people say the word firestorm, I now know what they're talking about. Today, Queensland faces the worst bushfire threat in recorded history. An ember storm raining down. On what was once an idyllic beachside retreat, but became a fiery hell. The firestorm fueled by erratic, ever-changing winds. This is absolutely insane. It ripped through Perigian Beach on a terrifying scale. Residents like Karen Radburn drawn to the ominous glow. This is in my house. And it's coming so close, the heat that comes off it is quite unreal. Homes are destroyed and a firefighter in a critical condition as blazes burn the length of the state. Surrounded by flames with no clear way out. This is a ferocity faced by firefighters across New South Wales and for some it's come at an enormous cost. I've lost my home, my business, my horses. In the afternoon, it's pitch black. A return to treacherous conditions with disastrous consequences. We lost the bloody sheds, house. That is our house. Don't look. Don't look. 
in Rapville at Busby's Flat in the state's north. The fires took hold in the heat as temperatures hit the late 30s and winds hampered efforts to bring the blazes under control. That's my recently built house burning down. For the first time, we can show you that single point of ignition, a stringy bark since felled by forensic teams. A lightning strike to this tree sparked one of the biggest bushfires the world has ever seen. A state of emergency, an unprecedented bushfire event is unfolding across New South Wales. This is the day New South Wales feared, what authorities have dubbed uncharted territory. We've never seen this many fires concurrently at emergency warning alert level. Frantically fighting flames to save life and property. The out of control bushfire near Taree, a challenge for even experienced hands. Yeah, all right. Can't beat nature. This shed was only a little burnt, but unpredictable winds sent fire fronts everywhere. An orange and black sky meant danger. Many residents grabbed what they could and left. Some animals left behind, some thrown in the back of the car. Not safe to stay. Yeah. yeah. Um, you collected the belongings, the dog. Yeah, dogs and shooks are all in the ute. Authorities are calling it the most dangerous bushfire week Australia has ever seen. Late this afternoon, the kind of emergency that everyone was dreading. Thankfully, I've got some awesome neighbours that were looking after the place, putting out a few spot fires. Within a few minutes, they took hold, prompting emergency warnings. Residents were told it was too late to leave. Well, it's just a big shock. It still is overwhelming. You don't think it's real. From above, planes and helicopters lent support to firefighters on the ground who were forced to contend with difficult terrain. Almost everywhere you look in this street, you'll see houses and cars painted pink. The blaze got so close to homes, a fire retardant had to be dropped from above. As fire burnt out of control east of Nimbin, some locals took out their frustration on opposition leader Anthony Albanese and the local state MP. Get more money for it! Oh, my friends are out there! My whole life is out there! Everything! Tonight, fires surround Sydney. Three join north of the city to create a mega blaze as authorities predict conditions will worsen. Armageddon arrived on Mike Erland's back door this afternoon. Look at that! Look at the cyclone! Mike and his 23-year-old son faced off against a wall of flames armed only with a garden hose. It just kept getting bigger and bigger and then there's a whole line of it and it's Mother Nature at her finest and she's pissed off. Thanks to firefighters, their family home was saved. And these guys were amazing. They were, they were great. A landscape from hell. Filmed around 4 p.m. Flames bite and burn everything they touch. Jochen Spencer simply has no choice but to run. Oh. Amazingly, he escapes unharmed. I saw a tornado fire just engulfing trees. Um, everything. Everywhere you look, there was flame. Just down the road, firefighters could do little to save a house from the fire's grasp. This, one of at least 20 structures damaged during the night. Just breathing was a struggle, with the air quality index reaching 11 times above hazardous levels. Some workers were told to go home as the haze thickened throughout the morning. Being outdoors and breathing in the smoky air is equivalent to consuming 30 cigarettes a day. Another day, another haze over Canberra. New health warnings over lingering bushfire smoke. Tonight, we're broadcasting from the front of the ABC building in Dixon, 
where smoke has prompted the fire alarms to go off like so many buildings across our capital. This appears to be coming the new normal. A record-breaking heat wave. Australia sweats through its hottest day ever with temperatures set to soar even further. First came a thundering roar. And then a wall of flames followed by a full-blown emergency. Your heart's thumping, you know what I mean? And it's just going bang, bang, bang in your chest, you know, and you're thinking, geez, I'm thirsty. And you, you just do what you can do. The blaze tore through bushland, putting lives and homes at risk between Balmoral and Picton. Even the most experienced firefighters struggled to put on a brave face. The fire is, is as bad as it gets. Um, we've just seen a 50 metre high fire front come through. Several properties caught fire, others were smothered by black smoke. Terrifying, it really was. I've never been in a situation like this before. It, it, it was so quick. Like we're looking and the little flames are coming through the trees and we had to take cover because it just went over. The strong winds are now fanning this blaze through the National Park. You can see it is burning everything in its sight. The smoke is thick, it's really hard to breathe. And now the man living in this property over here has holed up inside, it is now too late to leave. He is hoping for the best as crews continue to defend his property. And this is only day one of a week long state emergency. Tonight, South Australia burns, claiming one life and destroying properties as catastrophic conditions fuel more than 120 fires across the state. Flames engulfed properties, destroying homes and scorching farmland. Trevor Kerber lost his home at Woodside. The woodshed caught fire and then that fanned onto the house and uh, then it was all over Red Rover, I'm afraid. The fire swept through Labethal's main street, the atmosphere apocalyptic. Flames lapped the tops of trees and turned the skies red. Gosper's Mountain was elevated to emergency warning level at midday. But then, the skies had turned dark nearby in Bilpin, with residents told it's too late to leave. 3,000 fire and emergency service personnel are battling the fires. Um, we got the water bombers helping us, ground crews and uh, Fire and Rescue helping us. The fire tore through here earlier, but not everything has been burnt. Fire crews will be mopping up for days to make sure that spot fires don't flare up. Under a glowering sky, a community sheltered by the water as the fire closed in. The sirens started up and at that point I was praying. I was an atheist mate for 20 years. I was praying to God, I was praying to Jesus. At probably about 800 metres I suppose from the caravan park from where we are and it's, uh, we're just getting some embers flying over now. It looked like Armageddon. Holy f that behind me is Malacuda. Residents were told to get in the water when they heard warning sirens. Some decided not to wait. Everyone's safe and sound. Got the girls and the dogs up the front. Back on shore, the flames reached the edge of town. Houses within visual sight are being lost in and around that Malacuda area as we speak. After weeks of threatening coastal towns, the south coast bushfires suddenly roared into full force, triggering warnings to residents from Kuma to Bega and north to Batemans Bay and beyond. Seek shelter as fire approaches. As the blaze struck with ferocity, emergency crews were stretched thin, struggling <clears throat> in chaotic conditions. Go! Go! Strong, changeable winds fanning the destruction. In Batemans Bay, holidaymakers retreated to the water as visibility plummeted. Shops and cafes shuttered up. It's horrific, it's like a war zone. Catastrophic, no words to describe it. Homes lost up the back of us. Scared, nervous. <laughs> um, kind of want to go home but can't go home yet. So yeah, just planning on where to go from here. As firefighters battle these horrendous conditions, you can hear gas bottles exploding just a few kilometres from here. And people have come here 
to the water where they feel safer. Lake Conjola locals watched as dozens of homes and businesses burnt down. Today has been absolutely extraordinary. I've covered plenty of bushfires in my reporting career. I have never experienced anything like this. You need to be here to understand what it is like being in communities that are entirely cut off. To the south there were bushfires, to the west there were bushfires, to the north there were bushfires and in every direction roads were cut off and that's what saw so many hundreds, indeed thousands of people, take refuge wherever they could. With fire coming at them from the north, the south and west, there was only one direction for residents and holidaymakers to head. Along the south coast, hundreds fled to the water any way they could. It's the unprecedented um, things we're seeing at the moment, particularly with all our surf clubs on the far south coast, where we have you know, approximately you know, six to 7,000 people sheltering at Bermagui alone, over 4,500 people there. Overnight, a time-lapse video captured the moment hell enveloped the town of Brogo. It was just like looking into the, like the gates of hell. It was just incredible. It was so intense and there were more than one section. And, I just, oh. and that's when I realised that we'd done the right thing to go. Yeah. People here are in shock. Hundreds of people have lost their homes. Hundreds more are stranded because they've been evacuated or they're trapped here along the Princess Highway. The bushfire invaded these leafy streets with little warning. As the flames swept in, cars and gas bottles exploded and precious homes became infernos. We didn't get very much warning, at least um, we, were, we were sent a message on our mobiles. The fire was unstoppable. This dash cam vision records and proves effort to defend whatever houses they could safely reach. In this whole row of homes, only one is left standing. We're lucky, just really grateful that we're alive and we've, we've got our house. But I look here at these poor people. It's devastating. Mogo has been gutted. More than a dozen homes have been destroyed and just as many businesses here in the main street have been burnt to the ground as well. But for all the devastation wrought in this little town, it's also been the site of one piece of good news, the Mogo Zoo. They've been able to save every single one of their animals, large and small. The fire has passed, supplies have run out, and everyone is desperate to stock up. Some baked beans maybe, some bread, got to keep the kids happy. A generator loaned from the local fish shop allowed the supermarket in Naruma to open its doors for shopping in the dark. There are people here that don't have anything. They've been evacuated and they come with nothing. The message is, if you are a visitor or a tourist, to the Shoalhaven, the south coast or the far south coast. Uh, you should make your plans to leave the area and go home. Well, let's get an eyewitness account of the traffic situation in the southeast of the country where so many people are fleeing, uh, particularly the coastal regions which are affected by bushfires as people are being advised to leave. I've told everyone to get out, get out of the south coast, but there doesn't seem to be a great deal of organisation and there's a couple of little towns one called Nimitabel and one called Bemboka. I measured the, the tail back from Bemboka. I measured it on my odometer as I drove the other way. It's 25 kilometres long. I, I, I think people are going to be stuck on that mountain all night tonight trying to get home. It just strikes me as crazy. You, you, tell, you, you tell an entire coastline to evacuate by one mountain road with next to zero traffic management. It's, it's, it's a real schmozzle up You just hope to God nothing happens in the next 12 hours until they get people out of there. Breaking news this hour, authorities now confirm more than 380 homes destroyed in the New South Wales South Coast bushfire crisis as authorities warn tourists to get out and get out now ahead of devastating weather conditions on Saturday. Joined now by the local member for Bega, Andrew Constance, who's also the New South Wales Transport Minister. Andrew, thank you so much for joining yes. us. We have the breaking news this morning, just announced by the Rural Fire Service. The number of homes lost in New South Wales has jumped to 381 in this current crisis. What's your response to that? No. Yeah. It's hard to grapple with, isn't it? No, it's unfair. You know, um, I met 4RFS 
guys yesterday lost their homes. Um, uh, beautiful neighbours of mine lost their homes. It's tough. Well, we'll get it together. You know, we're tough here. Um, pretty resilient people, been through a lot. We'll recover it. Um, but it, it's just hard. The cows survived, but the house and everything else went up in flames. This is now home for Kuama residents Robert and Judy Gillies. Their advice for those thinking of riding out a firestorm? My opinion, go. Your life isn't worth staying. But not everyone can leave. Shortages of just about everything have left some evacuees at hard-hit Cabago stranded and frustrated. We can't move. We've got no fuel to go anywhere, even if we wanted to. Um, so we've just got to prepare this area as best as we can. Virtually all the tourists have heeded the call. They've left, leaving Bermagui almost a ghost town. But those locals that have stayed, many of them are sticking close to the coast. And if it all gets too much and the fire does come into the town, at least they've got the beach. Her fields bristle with anger too. You are out! The politics of visiting them forever fraught. Grief-stricken Cabago was no place for an ill-prepared interloper. Tell that fellow I'm really sorry, John. He's fine. I'm sure he's just tired. No, no, he lost the house. What residents couldn't say with their hands, several said with their voices. I'm only shaking your hand if you give more funding to our RFS. So many people here have lost their homes. 20-year-old Zoe Salucci McDermott's anger sprang from personal loss. Her home destroyed. It broke my heart because I would have happily sat down and had a cup of tea with him if he just had have asked, am I OK? There are people in the community that feel let down, that they feel that you haven't done enough, provided enough leadership. Do you understand that emotion? Oh, look, my role is to ensure that we get the resources to where they need it needs to get to, to work with the states and territories. There's been, you know, there's been a lot of noise that, uh, and, and issues that people have sought to raise around these fires, and, and it, that's been very, it's been very, there's been a lot of emotion around it. It's been a nervous night for residents of Eden on the far south coast of New South Wales. Hundreds sought refuge overnight down near the water to escape an emergency level bushfire. In the months ahead when all the analysis is done, they're, they're going to have to rewrite the books because the fires that we have experienced here and all over New South Wales, Victoria, all over the nation, have really uh, uh, been unpredictable and, and, and really behaved in ways that uh, experts just didn't expect and didn't see coming. Celeste Barber's in-laws live in Eden and she shared her shock at seeing the state of the town as it was aired here on the ABC News channel earlier today. So this is where Arpy's family are right now, right? It's, I don't know who he is. It's, the, it's 10 o'clock and they're on boats. They're on tugboats just sitting at the wharf not knowing what to do. Up to 100,000 people may have to be evacuated in Victoria in what could be Australia's biggest peacetime exodus. It's an unexpected ending to the Christmas holiday from hell. We came down here to get some rest and relaxation, but um, unfortunately things didn't go that way. Locals and tourists have been stranded in Mallacoota after fires ravaged the town and cut off roads. This morning, those desperate to leave finally had a way out. Anybody that registered and asked to be evacuated by sea will be, will be taken, so nobody will be left behind. Come closer, you can hear me. 1,000 people registered to leave and their long journey home began on a bus from the town centre, <laughs> then on landing recovery vessels, oh, we go. which took them to the landing ship HMAS Chules. The pets came too. <laughs> Inside the megaship, the evacuees found food and friendly crew. This is how we drive the ship. Wow, pretty amazing, huh? The journey could take up to 17 hours, plenty of time for weary refugees to take stock of their recent ordeal. Fire jumped containment lines and tore through the Flinders Chase National Park in all directions, triggering an emergency warning for the whole western half of Kangaroo Island. It has done exactly as we anticipated much more quickly and more fiercely than we anticipated. This fire tornado shows the intensity of the conditions. The fire fanned by gusty winds and soaring temperatures. North coast has been, looks like it's been hit by a nuclear bomb. At the KI Wildlife Park, koalas are being nursed back to health, but it seems they're the lucky ones. I'm guessing 
You know, well over 50% of our koala population is gone. Wildlife has always been one of KI's biggest draw cards, and despite the devastation, locals are begging people to make plans to visit soon. We have a community spirit here on Kangaroo that is not burnable. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts to see this. This animal lover lost the kangaroo sanctuary she helped build over 16 years. There was so much smoke and fire and I didn't, I didn't think there was going to be any alive. Only 22 kangaroos have returned to Runnyford since the bushfire. Some are dehydrated. I've just been running around trying to get water everywhere, but we've got no running water. Others have severe burns. This is Honey. She hasn't received medical treatment yet and she's in critical condition. These were the terrifying scenes captured by Ray Harvey as she was evacuated by boat on New Year's Eve. I think we've lost your house. Yeah. We're all going to lose our house. That's our property on fire right now. I didn't think we were going to be saved. I thought we were going to burn alive. And as we were, actually, as we were leaving the property, the area we were... The area we were sh sheltering in was on fire. This is park ranger Mick Pettit's first drive back into Kosciuszko. It's a tough sight. Up the back is uh, Pattinson's hut, which has also been completely destroyed. He's driving through the long abandoned village of Kyandra on the Snowy Mountains Highway. The old courthouse, which stood for 140 years, is gone. Yeah, quite devastating to see it like this. It's just one ruin among many pieces of Australia's alpine history. On board Australia's largest warship, a glance towards land provides a constant reminder of the bushfire assist mission. HMAS Adelaide's been stationed off Eden for a week with an uninterrupted view of the still smouldering local timber mill. So far, this landing helicopter dock hasn't conducted evacuations. Instead, her crew's busy delivering relief to stranded South Coast communities. We came in off leave to be here to get this ship underway. Yeah. All of you. So did we. And so we should, because it's our people who need our help. Pure, unbridled joy. Send it down, hooray! Farmer Bryce Chapman from The Hunter receives a drenching. Hey, cows! Here's some rain to give you some feed. It's been a long time since these cows have felt water drops. And don't they know it? Singing in the rain. The stock belonged to Doug Robertson. He's from a drought-stricken property in The Hunter. Just from a mental point of view, you know, it's just that load starts to lift and you can see the light again and hope that um, things can improve. The heavens have opened up across large parts of New South Wales. Dust has turned into puddles. Across the fire ground, there are now green shoots of regeneration. While recovery could take decades, experts say we must learn the lessons now. We need to go away and look at is how we can better prepare for these events in terms of the way we manage the landscape. That's what I would like to see, that the community really prepare and help us to help them. And it helps if people can take that time to prepare their property for the fire season. It was absolutely incredible the generosity and support that the public had for the firefighters and really showed the best of that Australian mateship. So I would really like to say thank you to people. You don't realise how much of a difference that support to the firefighters really gave us to keep pushing and keep going out there day after day.